If we're gonna date, you may have to defeat my 70 Alexis. You have 70 Alex boyfriend? 70 Alexis, yes. I'm talking to you, Scott Pilgrim. And I have to defeat your 70 Alexis? Pretty much. Boy, I better quit messing with these hipsters. They know how to fight. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah. Maybe next time you'll tone it down when we go out to Shangri La. I, I will, uh, man. A uh, hipster will hit you so hard, you'll just burst into coins. Now, now, that's just this movie. We all know. Usually, they just curl up in a ball, and hope, hope that it doesn't hurt that bad. They, they, they get on their iPhones and talk shit about you. Yeah, they have usually got three or four sweaters on. So you know, between those, no, I, you know. I have a, I have an easy way of solving that problem. I usually just tell them, Hey, look, Mad Men's on right now. Go check it out. <laughs> oh, New episode. They, they huh? hit him in the, hit him in the back of the head. They run away. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you dropped your ironic mustache, huh? <laughs> Bam! <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, man, this is uh, this movie. I even shouldn't be talking about hipsters because this is a geek paradise here. Well, I don't know. I mean, I I thought, man, you know what? As far as video game indie rock hipster fantasies go, this is the best one I've ever seen. ever seen. <laughs> well, it's yeah. definitely like there are hipster movies like Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist and stuff yes. like that. And this is sort of a satire of that sort of thing more than it is indulging in it. Even I mean, it is sorta because it certainly likes the music of it and well, stuff. It's but thing, yeah. it's the thing that, but, that Edgar Wright does the best is that he'll parody something but totally immerse you know the film in it yeah. where it's like wow you got the you have to love this on some level to hit every mark of it and, and to be so full and just love it so much and at the same time make fun of it too no, I'll yeah. say this right now Edgar Wright could do no wrong and I hate I hate <laughs> even I hate even that's a Cyrus line I hate <laughs> even saying that you know this has anything to do with hipsters because I, I don't want this movie to be associated with hipsters well they do say hipster, say hipster like hipster. 10 times in this movie yeah. they actually I say know. that girl's a hipster <laughs> that guy's a hipster they say that out loud in the film you can, but so I you can pull yourself I'll, back yeah. all you want I think it just okay. comes down to the whole thing that maybe the Canadians and English don't make a big deal about kind of the whole hipster thing as we do here. I guess maybe not. Maybe that's just one big hipsterdom there. It's like, but... why are you guys labeling like that in America? What are you, a bunch of idiots? They just well, like yeah. music and dress in the current fashions. Oh, no. I know. I mean, no but... one's ever done that. <laughs> well, I mean, it's crazy because the movie even starts out with a white dude getting an obligatory Asian girlfriend, you know? Sure. I mean, <laughs> and, and make no mistake. I mean, that was the beginning of the movie. Dude, come in. I got an Asian girlfriend. And, it, that, and you can tell this is a movie because everybody in the movie says, you got an Asian girlfriend? Shit, that's yeah. normal in the real world. Make no mistake. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim, and as far as the stuff they associate with him that is kind of the sort of negative aspects of hipsterism, he's a little douchebag. I wanted to beat his ass, except I'd get turned into a pile of gold coins. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, well, maybe not just Michael Sarah. I want to beat his ass. <laughs> Regardless, that you just get turned into a pot of chips or something. Don't, don't be <laughs> a, a coupon for a free beer. Yeah. I would think they would have to put Michael Sarah in some kind of Pope mobile or something because I just autonomically want to hit him if I saw him standing next to me. I'd be like, oh, you can't continue on breathing. When I got when it got announced that Michael Sarah's playing Scott Pilgrim, I was like, how? Because Scott Pilgrim's not a like a little you know he doesn't mope, he doesn't mumble his words, he's kind of animated. And as Michael Sarah performances go, this is the most animated he's been, but also just because of the, the great dialogue that was written for him, it worked. No, oh, I yeah. agree. This is the first Michael Sarah movie I've seen where I was like, wow, okay, he's actually acting. He's playing a character this time around. He's not oh, yeah. his self, but he – I like this character so much more than I like Michael Sarah, honestly, right. <laughs> that, yeah, you can't help but think, you know, wow, I hope he continues to go in this route with the rest of his films because for a little while he was one of those actors that yeah, was starting yeah. to get me really sick. I was I, honestly starting to get really sick of seeing him in so many damn movies recently. I, I appreciate you you care for this performance. Uh, Pow! <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I couldn't help it. Oh, oh, man, I was just imitating him. <laughs> I know. I get uh, told and you even then, I thought you, that's <laughs> too much. <laughs> you know, You're just going uh, crazy over there. I, think, I, was like, I know, because I heard some mumbling. I was like, oh, shit, don't tell me the computer's messing up again. I don't think <laughs> the strength of this right movie now? is is uh, uh, Michael Sarah at all. I mean, I think that Edgar Wright, who is one of the best directors working today, takes full advantage of the fact that he is that persona. He is this guy, and he just lets him do what he always does. It, the star of this film is Edgar Wright, because every itself, yeah. inch of it is filled with stuff going on. I mean, you said before he's more animated than usual. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they are animating on top of him. There's all these fight scenes. People are going, I can't believe he can fight. He can't fight. If you watch it, you can see there's like, watch it real carefully. There's moments it blurs from whoever the stuntman was. They did a great job putting his face onto it, but that's not Michael Sarah. Sorry, Cyrus. Okay, I, I 
I understand there's some hate here, but you got to back off a little bit. We had to review the film, not Michael Sarah, the, I, the man. I got to get psyched up for the big fight later. I know. <laughs> Cyrus versus Sarah. <laughs> fight. <laughs> and you would get your ass with I know, <laughs> Probably. I know. Yeah. Michael Sarah standing over him. Finish him. Shit. I, I, I got those big sumo holding character your, moves. Your, your, yeah. Holding your vertebrae yeah. in his hand. I got those big sumo <laughs> character moves. I do that big <laughs> jump up in there. Yeah. Oh. For some reason, for some reason, Cyrus. Every time I think about you being involved in a video game as a villain, I just think of you as that mushroom guy in the Mario Brothers. You're just kind of there. You're not, well, that was an early job. You're trying to figure out what to do or how to get the hell out of here. I got fired. Land. I got fired for eating the other mushrooms. Well, you know, we're, we're talking about Michael Cera in this movie because he is a, a, he is a likable douchebag. I mean, yeah. he. It's funny if we were to describe this character. He's whiny. Why does everything have to be so complicated? He cheats on his girlfriends. He's indecisive. He can't afford his own place to where he's sleeping in the same bed. He's straight, but he can't even afford his own bed. He's got to sleep in a bed with his, with his gay friend. And his, yeah. gay, friend, and his gay friend's lovers. And his gay friend's really lovers, yeah. There is yeah. nothing going on for this guy, but he's shamelessly manipulative and vain. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and there's something but, about a guy who who just doesn't care about who he is and continues to be that way and is self-aware that, okay, he knows it. He ain't going to learn anything. Either you accept him or you don't. <laughs> and later in the movie, he, he does start to grow. But before he does that, with the situation that he's put in that's going to help him develop his character to be a better person is this girl that he meets. What's that girl's name in the movie? Ramona. Ramona, Ramona Flowers. Flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With the ever-changing hair. Uh, you know that bitch is bipolar. I, 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 I dated that chick. <laughs> yeah, we, we I, I all have. Dated, a good year I dated that chick at some no. point. She's well, not the necessarily thing is my, my, bipolar, but she is bisexual. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, yeah. The yeah. scary thing about that chick is she looked like my old chick and almost had the same voice. Where I'm like, oh, God, they I'm, made a movie I, about I, her. I'm Where telling the you, fuck is my movie? We, we have all dated that chick at some point. Yes. The whole time. When you when you watch him go after it's like, Dude, I, I know where you're going. This is not going to end well. Yeah, no. But at the same time, you deserve that. So keep on going. No, you can't tell someone who has that infatuation because you had the same thing with oh, that yeah. girl. Where you're like, I know she's bad for me. I know this isn't going to work out well. I know I'm going to get my heart broken. But damn, I got to hit that. Oh, I know, man. No, apparently she's so hot. And there's a scene in this movie where she's in bed, got her ass up in the air. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I don't care if she's bipolar, <laughs> bisexual, b bilingual, or whatever. You know? I, I turned into a paparazzi guy. I was taking yeah. pictures in this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm yeah. all up in this. I got to get this yeah. shit on I'm the about internet. to go all Animal Planet on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the female Ramona is presenting. Yes, she is. Yeah, she got one of them. Almost like, she almost got one of them big baboon asses. You know? <laughs> no matter how big of a bitch any of us might have dated before I had to come across, and we have seen this girl before in some way or another where we dated her or had her for a night or something. She ain't never had seven evil ex-boyfriends that want to beat the shit out of us. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, she has. <laughs> well, maybe for me. But yeah. I didn't actually have to. There yeah, was yeah, not all the fighting. martial arts and yeah. stuff. It was well, more like me crying. It's me crying in the corners with that was. Oh, no. I mean, well, at worst, it's a stare down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually those guys are like either successful or they've gone to another country where you're like, oh, I got to compete with that now. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to have a goal and a career like down the down the tube. Yeah. No, yeah. It's, I, it wasn't like we had to fight them. It's kind of like, you know, my last boyfriend had a big addict than this. Like, yeah. oh, I like when you meet those guys and they're broken men. And rather than take the hint, like, hmm, this could be me someday. You go like, well, I'm glad that I'm not him because me and her, our love is real. <laughs> well, you know what's funny? last word is when, when he's the guy who comes out. He's like, look, man, Colgis says, like, I'm, I know what you're gonna think, but I wouldn't feel right if I didn't warn you, man. Get out, run. Yeah. And you're like, man, what a, what a dick. Well, I can't believe he'd even pull that bullshit. And a year later, you're going to your new boyfriend. Go, hey, man, come here. We got to talk. <laughs> no, you, you need to start wearing when you see that really old guy with the sign going, you're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's like really 25, like he's 80. <laughs> Run away. Yeah. yeah, but now he's walking around in a robe and sandals with a sign. The end is nigh. Are you weird? And I tell you, I, I, I probably have dated this girl, but I'm like, I'm usually hiding in a dumpster behind a door. Is number six gone yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'll come out one of these. <laughs> Not jumping out of a window or something, but no. So now in this world, the way Ed, this is Edgar Rice, I'm um, Edgar Rice, <laughs> Edgar Rice Burroughs. No, this is Edgar. <laughs> this is Edgar Wright's description of it. He's like, think about this movie as a musical, where in musicals people all of a sudden just erupt into song for no apparent reason. In this movie, instead of erupting into song, they all of a sudden just start fighting. Yeah. And, and you know what? From that description, I'm like, I'm sold. Yeah. <laughs> you got me. Because he played it right. As soon as the the, the fights start. 
it's not like all of a sudden you're jerked into another film. For some reason, it just it it feels like yeah, this is supposed to happen. This and I'm okay looking at this this movie. All of a sudden, turned it into like one of the coolest like video game movies I've ever seen. A slash and slash comic book movies, and that's the well, one thing I have to say about. Yeah, that's see, that's wow. the thing that Edgar Wright had, had done. I, I can safely say that he made probably the most successful, at least as how it looks and how it was executed, the most successful anime movie, <laughs> the most uh-huh, successful yeah. video game movie. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, really, it's, it's I every... I would go so it, far to say also the most, the, the the best translated comic book movie ever made. Yeah, made, yeah. As far as being faithful mm-hmm. and, and just capturing the spirit of it and even amping it up. Like, he understood, he understands more than anybody else. Okay, look, this is the comic. This is what makes it work. I'm going to take this, but put it in a film because I understand what makes a good film work, too. Yes. And I've never seen a translation like this well, or something that amped me up so much. And you know there's going to be people who are going to complain what's been left out. And they're – look, I'm telling – I'm addressing you directly. Those parts wouldn't have worked in the movie. No. Do you need to see the practically entire volume flashback to high school with him and the red-haired drummer chick? No. Yeah. They got all that care- <laughs> taken care of with a, like a single line in this movie. Yeah. You don't need to see that. It's not essential. So don't be upset. Hell, maybe they'll do I, – I think MTV's doing little Scott Pilgrim animated bits it's, that are accompanying the Is it MTV or is it Adult Swim or both? It's Adult Swim. I'm okay. sorry. Adult yeah. Swim. Yeah. And, and assumably cool. they'll be on the DVD. So, no, you know, chill out. It's so much that he got successful in this, as I said, a hipster film, a video game movie, an anime movie, a comic book movie. I'm surprised a fucking wizard didn't show up with an A-sided dice and it was that kind of <laughs> side of geekdom too. I mean, it's, it was incredible how he got all that right. And he does it mostly by just making everything fit to where you don't even question why this stuff is happening. Because really, really don't. Yeah. It don't yeah. I mean, if you really think about it, the movie doesn't make any sense. Well, it's, it's, it's so much except like, in its own context. It's well, so much like the comic book itself, because I remember when I first read it, and it, you know, look at these elements, I'm like, okay, uh, in, in, indie comic, which is pretty, you know, black and white and quiet, uh, video game, anime, all, I mean, all this in one book. I'm like, there's a bunch of elements that I'm not even that crazy about, and yet to read the comic, I was like, wow. This all, not only does this fusion well together and it works, but I'm really enjoying this. I can't wait, wait to read the next one. Well, Same formula here with the movie. I mean, to me, it seems like he took every, like, just dork, geek, nerd yeah. fantasy of that situation you get to. If you're just lucky enough to, to date a girl and all of a sudden her ex shows up and shoves you, you think you, you start to <laughs> fantasize what would you do in that situation. <laughs> and that's what this movie basically is. It turns into a huge <laughs> fantasy where, you know, you're jumping like 30 feet in the air, throwing punches, you know, punching people out to the moon. I mean, it, it just – it gets so crazy. But yet the visuals – I mean, the visuals really complement – uh, the the action scenes as well as the the, the music. I mean, the yeah. music yeah. I thought was pretty incredible. Well, and this is like the first movie where all the villains are about seven ex boyfriends. They all have such unique characters that they're they're not forgettable characters. It's like nobody was just thrown in here just to have a fight scene. Everything well, just worked. I, what I like about this movie is just as a, as an Edgar Wright film is like looking at this next to Hot Fuzz. And and uh, Shaun, of Shaun of the Dead, which are both peons to pop culture. I mean, themselves, they're like just inundated with pop culture mm-hmm. references and mm-hmm. explicit within those specific genres. Except they manage to do them in a way that's not like you know any of the other films that the, the hundreds of films that like to do that sort of thing where it just feels cheap. Look, we're just referencing it. Isn't that enough? Yeah. yeah. No, it's not really enough. That uses it in a creative and new way. This is like his master thesis of that, <laughs> yeah, where man. it's nonstop. <laughs> it's almost every frame of this film somewhere in the background to. The side three or four things going on at once is like referencing or or uh, something else or i mean sometimes really obscure like sometimes oh, yeah. it's just a, a sound effect that you're like oh i know yeah. where that's from <laughs> i mean not even just sometimes like a lot of times yeah, are, yeah and it's brilliant are. the way he makes it all work i mean you're laughing at you'll see this movie multiple times i guarantee you and every time you'll laugh at shit you didn't even notice the time before and it's one of those things that really kevin smith and quentin tarantino need to go see this movie and take notes and, and just try to figure out how to do that in their films because yeah He's he he's one of those guys that just does it so right that I never feel like I'm banged over the head with pop culture references in the in in, in you know in movies and this one just I mean once again that's he, that's he the did thing it so perfectly it's not nothing is overt here I mean you can go and watch this movie and you can say that's a video game and it's funny the way they're doing it I recognize fighting games I might not play them I might not know video games that well but I've seen this played out somewhere I can recognize this and it's funny 
people who really do know video games, they're going to recognize anywhere from the tune from Zelda in it, you know, <laughs> to the to right down to the sound effects that they use. And even there's some really small, subtle movie references in there. There's one scene where somebody has a green ring, and it makes the sound of me of, of Ming the Merciless's <laughs> yeah. ring from Flash Gordon, that 80s right. Flash Gordon. And yeah. none of this stuff is overbearing. And that's what I think is probably going to be a, a, a detri- detrimental to some audience members who go see this. Either everybody's going to love everything that they have here and love the way it fits together, or people are going to be thrown off by they're trying to fit too much in here, and I just don't get it. I think and, some yeah. people will, like, even if they're, you know, not caught up in the miasma of pop culture the way that we are and won't recognize a lot of this, it's still so nonstop colorful and entertaining, and it's not hard to follow the storyline. It's pretty simple. Yeah. That even if they don't understand stuff, you can laugh at it just as a non sequitur because of how fucking surreal it is. I mean, <laughs> if you don't understand that in video games when you kill enemies, sometimes they turn into piles of gold coins, and that, <laughs> that happens in this movie, you're still going to be laughing because the guys so are... Absurd. It's so absurd. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, he does it to where he makes it. He makes it work. Where if you don't, yeah, like you say, if you don't no, notice half the co- pop culture references, it's not going to bother you. It's not going to actually. It actually adds on more to this movie as far as just making it so unique that if you were, if you were to hear something that you're like, well, why is everybody laughing at that? I mean, it doesn't. It's still. I don't think it still bothers you enough to make you go, okay, I just don't get it. I mean, no. it, and if you are one of those people, just relax. Yeah, for <laughs> Seriously, real. what do you do? You, I don't understand every reference well, in this no, movie. No, that might Far be from some it. Amish people who go see this. <laughs> we have to cater to them. Can they go see movies yeah. at all? They can. From Springer, they can. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, I would also say that, like people like who somehow saw Speed Racer and went like, oh, I love that so much, like the show. Or the Watchmen, they're like, oh, he took it just right, right out of the comic. I'm like, no. You want to see how to do that? This is how you do that. Yeah, thing. yeah. You almost want Edgar Wright to do everything that's been done wrong <laughs> yeah. in movies. Like, and go back and redo it. Go back and redo uh, Mario Brothers. <laughs> no, I don't want know, that. Speed no. Racer. No, I don't want that. Yeah. Godzilla, <laughs> maybe. He would make them fucking hits, okay? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have yeah. faith in this guy, man. Yeah. He's, he, he is absolutely one of my favorite directors out there. And He's the, three for three. <laughs> Yeah, co I'm thinking about what yeah. you say, like, you know, like the, the ex-boyfriend shoves you and this is your fantasy of what you imagine mm-hmm. you do. It's like the ex-boyfriend shoves you mm-hmm. and rather than fighting back, you just go back to playing your Nintendo DS. <laughs> <laughs> and while you play, then you fantasize about yourself <laughs> beating him up as, as well as, you know, he, uh, Scott Pilgrim to beat up Captain American Superman along the way in the movie, too. <laughs> no, no, my fantasy is usually me getting hit in the head and then while he's banging my head while I'm unconscious, that's when I'm having my fantasy because <laughs> I can't. I have Inducing can't hallucinations, <laughs> yeah, the brain them. damage. You know. <laughs> it better not do that again. That's all I got to say. Yes, <laughs> Man, I, but the people in the movie I really like. What was the girl? Mary Elizabeth Winston yeah. who played Ramona? Who is so oh, hot. Yeah. She, she is so hot. She's gorgeous. And she just has the right amount of bitchiness to make you believe that she really is. To one make of you follow along. She is ex- to go after yeah. exactly the girl that you fall in love with at 22 and you just can't not think about and you're just like, oh, geez, that's a good uh, Oh, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna plot to kill her but current boyfriend Karen, so I can Karen get Karen Culkin as, as, what's his name? What, what, as, the gay, as, as, as uh, Wallace. Wallace. Wallace, yeah, yeah. His, his, his gay his gay roommate. Yeah, he just seemed to me I, like the whole time I kept thinking this is like Tobey Maguire trying to do an impression of Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> but it worked. No, no, it totally worked. No, He's I, one thought, of the best I thought he like chewed up the scenery every time. Oh yeah, on, yeah. Really. There were it, characters in here that were so good, I was sad that they couldn't be in it for longer. Like Chris Evans, I thought was one of my favorite yeah, he, of, yeah. the, of the of the evil exes because he's like the big Hollywood celebrity guy. Like when he comes walking in, they're playing what was it the uh, the, the, the theme to the Universal? Yeah, the Universal <laughs> theme plays <laughs> like da, 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 da. just boom, walking boom. on the set theme. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's pretty awesome. And but my favorite. Army of identical stuntmen. Yeah, adults, yeah. You know? My favorite character was Brandon Ruth. That's what I said. He beat up Captain yeah. America and Superman. Oh, oh that's, no, that's true. Yeah, no, Brandon Ruth, he plays a vegan. And they, uh-huh. then they again, another way of cleverly bringing that sort of characteristic to the movie. He's like, you know that vegans are better than other people. With him, since this is a video game, superhero, comic book movie, for him, that translates into him being able to float, and he's psychic, and, oh, <laughs> and he has that whole anime appearance of his eyes glowing yeah. and his hair like waving in the wind and shit. That was so he, much of the sense of humor of this film is that a line like that, where they're like, obviously Edgar Wright doesn't want us to believe that vegans are better than other people. What he's saying is, inside of this whole hipsterish type of culture, this film <laughs> is satirizing is that whole like attitude of like, well, I'm a vegan, so you know, I'm surprised that somebody didn't get hyper superpowers from driving a hybrid. Or something. <laughs> Next. We have unfinished business, I and he. He and me. 
Don't you talk to me about grammar. The thing is, uh, Brandon Routh, he he definitely was by far one of the coolest. I think he, I think he pretty much is the coolest villain I've seen this summer in any <laughs> summer movie. And honestly, I was hoping the whole movie would focus around him because that character is so fucking cool when you see you him. You should watch last season of Chuck. He's a pretty great yeah, villain yeah. on that, yeah. too. Well, wow. Well, this, you know what? I mean, talk shit about him all you want as far as Superman Returns, but wow, this guy can act, and, and, and he definitely has a presence. It, it almost made me go, wow, you know what? I want to see this guy do another fucking hey, Superman Hey, he's fine movie as again. Superman, even if you didn't like the movie. It, nothing's wrong with him. No, he has I'll, the coolest yeah. defeat of any of the exes, too. I really yeah. like the actress that played Knives Chow. Yeah. Because that character mm-hmm. in the book was probably kind of two-dimensional, and she really brought it to life. She did. You you really felt for her. They rearranged her story a bit, yeah. but I thought to and the benefit of that I did, character. too, because I, yeah. I can say, like, if I... Ellen if, Wong is a character. Okay. Well, in, in, in the comic, if there was any problem I had with it, was kind of how her character was treated. But here, she gets, like, the full, like, fledged treatment of what she deserved and made her, a, a, you know, a, a character that deserved to stay, stick around in the story. Oh, the that's cool. Time. And uh, Jason Schwartzman, he had a, n- didn't have a whole lot to do in the movie, but he really, he hammed it up. And usually when you say you ham it up, it's like, that's not a good thing. But him, he was just relishing in that character yeah. that he played. I mean, he really did make me think, yeah, man, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> you know, he, he, he wasn't pulling any Charlton Heston. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to say I feel terrible about earlier. I don't want any hard feelings, so I figured, why not be the bigger man and just give you a call? Is Ramona with you? I don't know. Are you with me? Yeah. No! Jeez, buddy, it's gonna be all right. No, I just spilled hot cocoa on my crotch. Mm-hmm. Listen, as you know, I'm opening a new chaos theater in Toronto, and the Sex Pops are playing our grand opening tonight, and it would feel really weird for all of us if you weren't there. They just did a sound check, and the acoustics in here are amazing! Yeah, maybe I'll see you there. I hope so, amigo. I don't want any more bad blood between exes. What do you say? Mm. Okay, laters. But that's the thing, like, all these villains worked, and I'm just like... How come everyone can't get this right? As many times, they, they can't even get Spider-Man 3 right where you went to do, introduce two villains, and they can't even do that shit right. But just, I mean, Edgar Seven Wright, villains, Jesus, and you nail it. Jesus yeah. Christ. And each one what of those. Dick. And that's the thing, man. They, they, they are comic book villains, but they're also video game villains. Where they're the, you, If anybody plays video games, you know the characteristics of a boss. Sometimes you will fi- fight a boss who has, like, doubles of himself and minions. And, oh, yeah. and, and, yeah. that's, and this movie really plays on that. But it's also the comic book visuals in this are great, too. The movie is full of these floating sound effects. And like when a, if a character answers the phone, you see rain come off the phone. Some character says, I'm in love with you, and her love comes out. Yeah, and what do they call smoke. those, Leon, in, in comics, when the written out sound effect? There's a name for that. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. That's for any literary well, term. No, 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 but I mean like in comics when it goes, Baldoom, and it's written out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, like I think cool. that's the term. I thought yeah, there was a term. Call it sounds <laughs> yeah, you yeah. can call it sound effects or onomatopoeia. Okay. But bringing that up again, once again, Ang Lee's Hulk. When people try to defend that, they go like, well, he was trying to, you know, make frame it like a comic book, and I like that. And it's like, he did it poorly and half-assed. No, he just made blocks. Yeah. <laughs> not like, they did that in the yeah. old Wonder Woman show. That ain't nothing new. He made, like, yeah. and, yeah. And, uh, he, Spider-Man he made, on uh, Electric Company. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, he, made some, see, he made what some call in the movie industry shit. <laughs> 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 Sometimes combined with bull. Yes. yes. It's Hulk like when you're a little kid and you go, Mom, come here, look what's in the toilet. I left a giant Hulk. It's so huge. <laughs> it, it actually comes out the toilet. Oh! <laughs> Man, I, now, for all the praise that we're heaping on this film, it, it did it so well. This comic is based on a, uh, on the well, it's based on the comic by Brian Lee on, on oh, Malley. Malley. Yeah. yeah. Who, is he Asian? No, he's a, yes, an Asian guy. He's got an Asian guy with an Irish Malley. name. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe his dad's Irish. <laughs> maybe he changed his name. <laughs> and, and, and Toronto's very international. That's true. That is true. There's yeah. got to be tons of swirl babies. Or uh, maybe he's just trying to pass for white. <laughs> he's still an yeah, Asian. You see this guy, you know that ain't happening. <laughs> he's an Asian guy, colored his hair red. <laughs> Come in a le- leprechaun outfit. You know, our own, <laughs> so Asian ass out here. Our own Harris knows him. He used to work with them, uh, sort really? of. Yeah, they they did uh, illustrations line. and stuff for a book together. Harris so, don't know yeah. him, but Harris line. <laughs> yeah. You know, I used to do illustrations with him. Well, Bullshit. Maybe, maybe his wife well, said to be that. fair, this is like the first thing he's done of any notice at all. Yeah. Scott Pilgrim. It's not like this guy has a giant body of work behind him. Yeah, true. yeah so. it, and that is my complaint with the film. I, I remember. Matinee. 
<laughs> yeah, that that yeah, that matinee, that guy. My complaint is that guy's name, yeah. O'Malley. O'Malley. He's Asian. He shouldn't have that. that. Matinee. No <laughs> matinee. He hasn't yeah. written enough books. By naming his name O'Malley, it throws me off and confuses me. And I hate that, which I am confused by. <laughs> but no, <laughs> no, yeah, I think that the, the, I was given the book. Now, you were there with me, Leon, when we were at Comic-Con yeah. two years ago. And somebody, your friends gave me the book and said, you really need to yeah, read he's, this. Yeah, he's the publisher. He, he, yeah, he gave us the book. Yeah, he book. gave me like two books, which I've read. And... I, when I when he came to me, he's like, "You need to read this." Edgar Wright is making a movie about this, and has Michael Sarah. And I think I looked at you like, "Everybody's making a movie these days." <laughs> <laughs> with, with Michael Sarah. <laughs> with Michael Sarah. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> "I'll read your little funny book, sir." <laughs> After I wipe my ass with them. Tell me but when no, your movie's done. But no, I read them, and it took man. With the comic books, and I think I did complain to you also, Lynn, about this. I said, man, I don't get this book. It is really slow at the beginning. I, it, I said, it I, you is. told me to keep going because I said, man, what did you give me this hipster – uh, this 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 hipster what what's the what the fucking Bullshit. genre of people out there that I don't like either not God but uh, let's just uh, label uh, everyone emo. today emo that's right why did give me this Corey <laughs> Coleman hates you all <laughs> why did give me this hipster emo white a yeah. bullshit <laughs> doesn't he know who I think I am <laughs> <laughs> and you told me because I said man there's nothing happening in this it's it's just a guy who seems like a little bit of a douche and he's complaining about his girlfriend he's going out with another girl now and I don't it says like a lame soap proper and you're like man keep reading and it did get better it's like it got strange i was like man that book is weird and to me the movie did the same thing it took i didn't i didn't like the beginning any more than i liked it in the comic book i was like i really wish they would hurry up with this even with the visuals going on i'm like i don't know but when i mean come on when the movie took off it took off there's no way i i I can't imagine anybody who's even into like one part of this movie not loving it i don't think with this kind of movie you can jump right into the deep end and i think that's part of the or just the story i mean you kind of have to start off slow just so they can get used to these characters and who they are i mean the core characters i'm glad i feel what you're feeling i thought the same thing i was like man i hope this thing is gonna like you know, catch up to what I remember the comic yeah. book's goofiness level. And sure enough, it doesn't take long at all. I mean, no. maybe 20 minutes into it, and then it's like, let's just go into, like, top speed. Yeah, I just I just didn't like it at that, that beginning, and I didn't like it anymore in the movie. But to the to the film's credit, I went back and reread some parts with the villains in the, in the book, and they this movie made it way funnier than well, it was yes, in the book. Definitely. Well, yes, Well, the thing is with me, with me, I never read the book, so I had no idea what to expect. So the first like few minutes, I, I honestly was thinking, okay, well, this is they're establishing this character. Yeah, I thought, wow, Michael Sarah is a real cock. One of the one of the fights gonna happen, so I didn't see him get his ass beat. But a, as the story went along, and I started realizing like who his character was, I was like, oh god, I feel like this is kind of me. I've, I've been this. <laughs> Jackass, you know, more than once. But okay, well, it, and the thing is, as soon as it got going, I, I really got into it, and I really started to like his character. I mean, I, I figured, hey, you know, he's just a fuck up like the rest of us in our that we're in our twenty in our 20s, trying to fucking make it into a band, and just life was just kind of fleeting, you know? You're just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this whole situation, you know, once it starts, it really does get the ball fucking rolling, and you just can't help but be in, in that snowball effect it, along with the movie until, like, the very end when you're just like, oh, fuck, I, this, it, this is it, I want more. A uh, co-host, can I go ahead and just let you give your better-than-sex rating right now? Uh, <laughs> Eric, I, give, I give this... Better than sex. I was gonna say, did you? Did, were you the one who pictured a bunch of Japanese guys changing money, betting? It's like better than sex. Better than sex. I, I say it's gonna be a high matinee. No, not Corey's oh, review. Yeah. Oh yeah, better than sex. Okay, so. I already know who I'm dressing up uh, for Halloween as, so it's gonna be who? Ramona uh, Flowers? <laughs> one, of, one of Michael yeah. Sarah's yeah. testicles. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys, Sons I'm going to buy him a pink bitches. wig. <laughs> Asshole. I don't think they've actually dropped it. I'm going yet, to so. be Brandon Routh, all right? So, <laughs> all right. Uh, fuck you guys. I'm going to start a fight with you. <laughs> well, he's still had a Superman underoos. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it wasn't that bad. I'm with you, Leon. <laughs> uh, yeah, as far as the beginning being slow, I don't know. I didn't think it was – I mean, it had to build a character. But it was that when I got into it at first, I was like, this is pretty cool and, and it's funny. But I, I kind of forgot that it's going to amp up. And once it does, wow. I mean, I don't want to repeat what you guys keep saying. But I thought, like, you know, not only at the first fight – did it shift into high gear? But even before that, uh, I was with co-hosts like, wow, I'm really liking his character. And the thing about Scott Pilgrim is 
he's not so much a, a, a prick as he is just a dumbass. He's just young. He's, he's making the same mistakes all of us made yeah. at the time. I mean, he thinks he's a good guy. He's trying to be, but at the same time, he's got his selfish, his selfish desires and trying to go for what he wants. And it, it nobody in this room said they had men with one girl and then got infatuated with a girl who was hotter yeah. and tried to get out of the first <laughs> shit to get over. I know. You know he just, oh, sure. I mean, oh, yeah. even even that, uh, <laughs> even the relationship he was in was stupid, and everybody was telling him that. Oh, yeah, I'm getting ready hey, for tomorrow. Hey, hey, we, still, we still got old people doing that shit. Look, look at Brad Pitt. I mean, didn't he pretty much do the same thing? <laughs> uh, look at Mel Gibson. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, let's, yeah, let's not that's look not, at him that's too not, much. Yeah, no. I'm, not, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, I love my boy co-host, but I ain't give nothing uh, uh, better than sex th this summer. Except this movie! Oh, oh, oh no! no, no. Rent, uh, please no, stop. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> I... the last we see of you, dude. I'm, I'm sorry, I just have not been, like, so surprised and so entertained all summer, maybe all year. And just, like, like we've been saying, it's like every frame of the film, every time a joke I thought was going kind of lame, it would somehow come back when the punchline came. It was like, damn, that actually was funny. They found a, yeah. a way to, to turn that around. I, I gotta have more faith. And so exciting. Like, I never played video games. When I came out of this movie, I wanted to go play a video game. <laughs> Shit, I wanted to beat the fuck out of people. And, I know. And you would still get your ass wet. Oh, I know. I'm sure I would. <laughs> Okay, here's the part where I get yelled at this week for, uh -oh. for being a fuck you, Cyrus. Uh -oh. Because all I can give this is a full price. It's not a better than sex movie. It's not a perfect film. There's, I agree with you that even though I see why they need to, the first do it, the first 20 or min minutes or so, I was just getting a little bit bored. I was like, I don't like this guy. I don't like his <laughs> friends. I'm not enjoying watching them. <laughs> I hate and his face. Honestly, as the movie goes on, it took a while for me to realize, you know, it doesn't really matter whether or not I ever like Scott Pilgrim because I didn't. I think he's still a total douchebag at the end of this movie but because the hero of this film is once again edgar wright he's so enormously wildly creative and talented that once it starts going wow how can you not be entertained by that but yeah. once again it's not a better than sex movie for me it's it's not quite up then there. what is it yeah you suck man <laughs> I already said my rating. I started with <laughs> what it. You so, say? Full price. Oh. Pay attention. <laughs> nah. Sit up straight in your chair. Or go. To, you know what? Just go to the principal's office. Full price. That's late. <laughs> Full price. Well, uh. you, uh, hey, I guess you can already tell. I mean, similar to you. Yeah. Like the beginning. It is very close, though, because this movie, past that 20 or so minutes, is everything that I was looking forward to all summer. Because I, I remember saying when I saw the, the first day I saw the trailer for Scott Pilgrim, I was like, that is the movie that I'm looking forward to this summer. That is it. And it delivered on that. I, I can't, there's rarely, there's, there's only that one, of, there's one or two films every summer that I want to see again. And this is one of those films. It's probably the only film I want to see again because I had so much fun being in that movie. And let's not forget, it still managed to bring other genres in there and get it right. Kung Fu films, oh, the yeah. fight scenes in this yeah, in this easily. movie are are amazing. They are badass yeah. fights. Yeah, admittedly, yeah. they're not so much based on Kung Fu films as they are based on games based on Kung Fu films. It's all the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, sorry. It's so technical, technical over here. here. So what now. are you doing? <laughs> Smarty <laughs> pants, right? <laughs> but, I know but, everything. But it's it's like everything you've seen, and yet this movie isn't like nothing you've ever. Oh yeah, yeah no, no. We were talking about true. Edgar Wright the other day, and says he manages to take. We just we saw the 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 other guys and said, man, here's somebody trying to do a spoof on a genre of film and not immersed in it enough to know what they're doing to be clever enough to make fun of it. This movie does that. Does slapstick very well, too. Jesus Christ, this movie does so many things right. That very shit when, when Scott Pilgrim jumps out the window. Jumps out that window. I laugh. Oh, <laughs> and man, it's only in the background. Awesome. <laughs> I laughed so hard during this movie, man. I mean, this movie, I was almost crying from joy watching this film. Would love to give it better than sex. It's very close, but those, the first 20 minutes is so slow to me. You know, one of the things I admire about Edgar Wright is the fact and that... And I gave it a full price. Wait, hold on. Right, let me get a clean cut there. Full price. <laughs> Edgar Wright can take a joke that is that funny and throw it in the background. He doesn't feel the need like a lot of directors who go, okay, here's the joke. Right. It's coming. There it is. What'd you think? Man, the jokes never stop in his movie. And and a lot of time it's like, hey, man, I don't really care if they see this the first time or not. Oh, yeah. The thing yeah. with that guy is that he's not necessarily reinventing the wheel, but he knows how to put on a bad set of rims on, on that <laughs> oh, wheel. You didn't, you know, yeah. Really make his it shine. His really next just... movie is The Wheel. So, yeah, what? it's a remake. Of the wheel? <laughs> of the wheel. 
No Shut shit. Up. Oh, come no, on. He's like, oh, 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 Jesus Christ. He's looking forward to so much another Edgar Wright movie that you got him fully like, I really? Did the I, didn't I tell you to go in the principal's office? Can I catch that old film on Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for that shit all day. Like, where is it? <laughs> Don't. I tell you what. I, I would recommend this movie to anybody out there except homeless people. Because you know homeless people going to be going and starting fights with people hoping that the moment they beat somebody's ass, they're going to turn into coins. <laughs> I'm rich. Uh, I'm, <laughs> you got any change? Well, maybe if I punch you in the face, I'd get a bunch oh of change. My God. <laughs> we should, believe, believe we you should film that shit. <laughs> I know. We'll get ready to film this because I really want to punch Cyrus in the fucking face right now and turn him into Chuck E. Cheese coins. That's what told me Just because right you I'm got like, oh, suckered? Yes. Oh, <laughs> damn. That was epic. 